You know, there's a part of home front survival history almost no one talks about anymore. Yet it quietly kept millions of civilians alive through the harshest winters of the 1940s. When coal piles ran dry, when oil was rationed so tightly that households measured it by the ounce, and when the grid collapsed under bombardment or severe storms, families didn't just sit in freezing rooms waiting for authorities to restore power. They adapted. Across Europe and beyond, people revived a centuries-old heating technique that didn't rely on electricity, modern pumps, or any mechanical assistance at all. It kept pipes from freezing, kept bedrooms from turning into ice chests, and allowed fuel-starved households to stretch their resources for weeks longer than expected. Most people today have never even heard of it, yet it's a method that still works flawlessly in any modern home willing to embrace low-tech resilience. Before this episode ends, you'll understand exactly how wartime civilians built gravity-fed radiator loops, why they worked so reliably, and how the same principles offer a blackout-proof heating system today. This isn't nostalgia. It's one of the most practical survival strategies the past has handed down. The system relied on simple physics that required no electricity. The heart of the wartime method was thermosiphon circulation. People of the era didn't use that technical term. They simply said the loop ran itself. Hot water rises, cold water sinks. That predictable movement is all the system needed. Instead of relying on electric pumps to force water through radiators, civilians configured their heating lines so that the natural upward climb of hot water created a steady flow. As the heated water entered radiators, it released its warmth into the room, cooled slightly, and returned downward to the heat source. As long as there was a temperature difference between the stove and the radiators, the loop kept moving. No motors, no switches, no wires. For households living with nightly blackouts, this self-running system wasn't, you know, just a convenience. It was a lifeline. Wartime households built these systems from scavenged materials. Most families didn't have access to brand new equipment, so they improvised. Wartime repair manuals are filled with examples of civilians repurposing copper pipes from abandoned buildings, fitting old cast-iron radiators salvaged from demolished structures, and, well, modifying existing home plumbing to form a continuous loop. The critical factor was always height. The heat source had to sit lower than the radiators it fed. Urban homes often kept the boiler or stove in the basement, while rural cottages sometimes dug shallow pits to lower their wood or coal stoves below floor level. The greater the height difference, the stronger the natural circulation became. A rising pipe from the stove's water jacket had to maintain a steady upward slope with no dips or sags. Any low point trapped air and stopped the system cold. The return line gently sloped back downward to the stove. When the first fire of the morning was lit, the circulation kicked in on its own. The heat produced was steady rather than intense, so families adapted their homes. A gravity-fed loop doesn't deliver the blast of warmth that modern forced air systems provide. 
Instead, it offers a slow, reliable and continuous heat. Wartime households maximize this by insulating their water lines to prevent temperature loss. They relied on heavier radiators capable of storing more heat. They set up living arrangements around what they called hot zones, usually two or three rooms linked into the same loop where the family spent most of their time. Homes that once burned piles of coal each week were suddenly using a fraction of that amount. Many families placed radiators under drafty windows because the rising warm air reduced the cold airflow, creating surprisingly efficient comfort even with minimal fuel. Some even hung thick curtains around beds to concentrate the gentle, radiant heat. In a world where every handful of coal mattered, these tactics kept households functional and warm. This low-tech system still works in modern homes with minimal changes. Anyone today can recreate the wartime setup using the same principles. A wood stove in a basement equipped with a proper water jacket can feed radiators on the floor above without a single electrical component. The piping must rise cleanly from the heat source, the radiators must sit higher than the stove, and the loop must remain open to prevent dangerous pressure buildup. Historically, these systems vented into a small header tank in the attic so excess heat could dissipate safely. Modern versions often feed into insulated thermal storage tanks, improving efficiency and keeping water hot long after the fire has died down. Insulation remains essential. Uninsulated pipes lose heat too quickly to maintain circulation. Consider a two-room cabin after a severe storm takes out the grid. A small stove on the ground floor heats the water in its jacket. A copper line rises into a radiator in the loft, and a second line returns the cooled water back to the stove. That's all the engineering required. Once the fire is lit, the loop circulates quietly and reliably. A homeowner with limited firewood can stretch supplies far longer than they could with direct radiant heat alone. Or look at an off-grid home that relies on solar power through the winter. Even with good batteries, sunless days can drain reserves quickly. A gravity-fed loop with insulated storage becomes an independent heating layer that doesn't touch the electrical system at all. It works when everything else fails. Wartime households trusted thermosiphon heating for one reason. It didn't break. It didn't freeze easily because moving water resists ice formation. It didn't require parts that burned out or circuits that overloaded. It simply worked day after day through air raids, shortages and bitter winters. For today's survival-minded viewers, the lesson is straightforward. Low-tech systems built on fundamental physics remain some of the most resilient tools available. This method isn't trivia from the past. It's a functioning blackout-proof strategy tested in conditions most modern households have never experienced. If this deep dive into forgotten wartime engineering helped you build a stronger survival plan, subscribe to Warfront Survival, share this guide with fellow history enthusiasts, and help keep these proven skills alive for the next generation.